Hi everybody, it's the Cello Guru coming to you from lovely Alameda Point, the Alameda Cello Academy. Uh, I am going to talk to you about working on sound with your bow arm. So this is video number two, and I'm going to explain what I call the Andy. It's an exercise I made up a little while ago. And Andy is my friend who's a cellist, and he gets a beautiful, beautiful cello sound, just glorious. It's really in the string. And so I always practice trying to sound like Andy. Of course, I don't sound like Andy. Only Andy sounds like Andy. But this is an exercise that I dedicate to his lovely sound. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the 1-0 exercise that Andy actually taught me and with that i'm going to make some modifications so we'll go a little further with it so what the exercise is is you're going to do one o on the c string one o on the g string one o on the d string and one o on the a string and then you repeat one o on the a string one o on the d string one o on the g string and one o on the C string. And then you're gonna to go to two, two, oh, two, oh, moving up towards the A string, and then two, oh, two, oh, two, oh, two, oh. And then you do the same thing with three, oh, and then you do the same thing with four, oh. Okay, so what we're going to try to do here is to get a really, really good sound. We wanna get core to the sound. We wanna really be in the string. Get a beautiful core, make the string ring. Do not skate your bow on top of the string. So the way we're gonna do this with this particular exercise now is we are gonna use short bow, medium length bow, and long bow. As much bow as you can use on the long bow. The main point is to retain the core that you got from using a short bow. Now it's easier to control your short bow so we're gonna establish the kind of core we want in our short bow. Um, and then we're gonna try to maintain it when we get to medium bow and then long bow. Now, the more bow you use, you're going to get more sound um, that will carry off into the hall or to the other side of the room. The shorter bow won't carry as well, but we're gonna work on controlling our sound this way, so. Here's what it's gonna sound like. squishing the stick with my index finger. Making some contact there, squish the stick, and make that string really ring. Now, I'm gonna try to retain that core, the depth of the sound that I got, as I add bow. Now I'm gonna do a medium length bow. Let's see how it goes.
That's pretty good. I think one other thing you can think about is really pushing your fingers down. They have to really get the string down in order to get the core to happen, okay? Now we're gonna do longbow. Now I don't think I can use the whole bow and maintain the core, so I'm probably gonna use more like three-quarter bow for my longbow. Let's see what we can do. troubles getting the string to ring on my elbows so I'll have to work on that um, that's some of my practice that I have to do uh, but the sound in that third one the longer bow I can tell it jumps out into the hall all the way to the other side of the room or what wherever you are it doesn't stay close right here so that's why I want to work on getting a lot of core with a lot of bow um, some things to think about in that exercise um, keeping your bow 90 degrees to the string. I don't know if you can see it from how I was. 90, 90. Keep it in one spot on the string. Try to make a groove and keep your bow in that spot. Okay? Um, that'll get you a better sound. And also just think about that core. Try to get really, really good, deep, soulful sound. You, if you're doing short or medium or long, you got to keep that core, okay? So now here is a variation on that one that I was doing this morning. So this is the Andy 101. It's going to be quarter, quarter, half. Quarter, quarter, half. 101, 101. We're going to go from the C string on your right all the way up to the A string and do the A string twice and come back down. Now on this one, we're going to work on our vibrato. So every time we hit a half note, we're going to put some vibrato on it. And let's just make a glorious vibrato. I don't know, I don't feel like really controlling my vibrato right now, so I'll just try and use my ear and see what kind of a lovely tone I can get on the vibrato. I'm gonna relax my hand, I'm gonna make it relaxed. Both arms are going to relax and we're going to have some arm weight into our project here. Here we go. The Andy 101 with vibrato. I'm going to do, I think I'm going to designate a medium length bow for this one. that I'm working on it and I'm consciously thinking about how much bow I'm going to use, how much vibrato I'm going to use. Now you can do that with the short bow, the medium bow, and the long bow. I liked the sound I was getting a lot more with the long bow 
And also you can control your vibrato on that if you want to. It seems like that time I was liking six. Wing, 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 wing. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wow, wow. One, two, three, four, five, six. Like that. You can vary that. But the things that you want to do, you want to make sure you have a relaxed vibrato and your arms are both relaxed and you're squishing the stick with this index finger. So that is the Andy 2 exercise that I offer you today. Now, if you practice your Andy daily, your sound is definitely going to improve. Uh, and since we're cellists, it is our job to get a glorious tone. So that is what you have to do. Um, I'm gonna see if my vibrato practice worked. So I'm going to play an excerpt from the Brahms C major piano trio, which I love playing, and see if I can get that sound that I want to get. sounding like me, which I'm going to have to accept at this point. It's not so bad. Okay, so everybody go out and practice. You practice your Andy every day, and I guarantee you by the end of the week, you're going to get a much better sound than you were before. So this is the cello guru over and out. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.